What's up everyone? Welcome to Wiz Loves Cars. I'm Wiz and today we're going to be talking about the Tesla Model 3 Long Range. So I'm here in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona with this beautiful Tesla Model 3 that I was able to rent on Turo. I've had it for the weekend and I'm going to give you my honest opinion on what I think about this car. So this Tesla Model 3 actually has an estimated battery range of 310 miles and does a 0 to 60 in about four seconds, which is pretty impressive for such a small car like this and for it to be an electric vehicle. Now, what's going to be pretty impressive is all of the features that are packed into this car once we get to do the walk around, once we get to get inside and understand some of those features and a lot of the Easter eggs Elon builds into this car. So take a ride with me and let's see how things go. And hopefully you like this Tesla Model 3. that this Tesla Model 3 offers. I won't do that in this initial video, but I will do that in a sub video so that way you can get a gist of all of the different features and all of the different Easter eggs that have been built into this vehicle. All right, so as you know, the first thing I like to talk about is the front of the car. So as we look at this Tesla Model 3, we notice that the front of the car is very simple. You have the lights at the bottom, so you have your turn signals, your fog lights, you have your DRLs that are gonna be on the car as well. Um, and then you have the front that sits here. So since this is an electric car and it doesn't have an actual engine that needs to be stored up front or, or anything like that, basically the battery is at the very bottom of this car, right? So it just gives you that opportunity to have that additional space in this front area. And I've actually found myself using the front a lot more than the actual trunk. So when you think about putting shoes in there, if <laughs> we went to Total Wine and More, and you know we, we put all of our, our beer and our, our alcohol and, and all that stuff in there and we went to the pool we had our pool bag we had our you know water shoes our towels all of these different things were in the front now if you were going to go on a picnic or anything like that you can put literally all of that stuff in the front you don't even have to worry about going to uh, the back of the car and, and putting it in the trunk or anything like that so the front is actually the place to be and it's actually my new favorite place on a car to store things all right so it opens up pretty easily and like i said there's not a crazy amount of storage in here but it's literally enough for what you need so like i said shoes beach towels picnic baskets book bags whatever you need anything that's quick and convenient where you can utilize it to store anything this is going to be your spot so even if you look in here i have some shoes in here right now now as we walk around the car this model 3 does come standard with the 18 inch arrow wheels they're not really wheels that i am personally a fan of i actually prefer some of the other options that you can get with the tesla that you can upgrade to obviously you're go you're gonna have to pay extra for those wheels um these are a little plastic and they look a little bit funny to me and, and they have a different aesthetic to them but i would say that overall since i've been driving this car over the weekend i've definitely they've grown on me so i will say that they have grown on me um you know there's a tesla emblem right here there's the tesla caliper in the back it's, it's gray if you're going to upgrade to a model such as the performance the caliper is going to be red you're going to get some 20 inch performance tires um, with that that look a little bit better and the only thing with these 18 inch aero wheels is that it maximizes your battery range or your your mileage essentially right so as you upgrade to those bigger heavier tires and those rims um, it's actually going to bring down your range a little bit by at least 10 miles that i've seen when i was doing the build out online with with the tesla so um, just just one thing to consider 
So if, if that's not a big deal to you, then I wouldn't really worry about it. If you're fine with these, get them. As I walk alongside the car, a couple things to note are the cameras that are on the outside of the car. So there's a camera located here. There's another camera located right here on the door. And these cameras are constantly recording. So when you think about sentry mode, which is Tesla's version of their security. So if someone were, if you were to lock your car, you were to walk away, and someone was to walk up to this car and sit on it or touch it or, or mess with it in any type of way or try to break in or, or even walk closely to the car, sentry mode is gonna activate and these cameras are gonna start to record and they're gonna record everything that person does until that person goes away or these cameras are also used to guide the car as well when you think about the autopilot feature that this car has so it's look constantly looking at the lanes on the left the left hand side and the right hand side and it keeps that car centered whenever you're driving the car on autopilot additionally speaking these cameras are also collecting a lot of data right and it's uploading that data to the tesla cloud so they're essentially collecting all this data by all the teslas that are on the road today to improve that autopilot function and that's why you're starting to see the additional packages that tesla is starting to offer now which is the full self-driving capability that costs about ten thousand dollars as an add-on um, which is some additional software that you can purchase either before or after you've gotten your tesla whether you know whichever model it is and they're constantly collecting all this data to be able to improve and iterate on that feature which is pretty dope if you ask me another thing that i want to note is the trim on the outside of this car so this is the 2018 model 3 so what you see on a lot of the 2018 models is you'll see this silver trim now on the 2020 2021 tesla model 3s you'll see more of a black trim i like the silver trim i'm a fan of the silver trim but honestly that black finish and that black trim really makes it pop another thing that i really like about the trunk of this car is that it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty minimalistic it's, it's simple it's a trunk again um, it's pretty easy to get into you just pop that open you can do this from the outside of the car or you can do this from the inside of the car there's plenty of space in here the seats also fold down so if you want to place any luggage back here or anything like that you have the option to do so there's some additional storage that's down below here so if you want to just tuck things away there's a deeper part within this trunk that you can store any other things or any valuables or anything like that that you think people may get into or whatever the case is so there are options of storage and, and i really like the fact that they incorporated this additional space so there's no wasted space in this trunk all right so as we get into this car you'll see that there's some model 3 badging that's located right here on the entryway as you get into the car um, there's also some tesla badging here on the steering wheel again there's a ton of subtle badging around the car and then once we actually get in here whoo that ac feels amazing there's no front screen in this car so <laughs> there's there's nothing here to obstruct your vision so what they've done is they've actually uh, brought down this area here in the front from a design standpoint so you have more visibility to the road you have a pretty big windshield as well so you can you know see and, and you have a, a greater field of vision and a greater field of view now there are two things that are happening with this car that's going to be a big adjustment for most people so you still have so before i get into those you still have your standard you know windshield washer uh, fluid and you know you turn signal that's here on the left hand side where you can basically turn right turn left you can press that and then you're gonna get some water spewing out there so all that stuff is pretty standard we're all pretty used to that and then on the right hand side here you have you can basically take the car and you can put it in park by pressing this button um, you can put it in drive by pressing this down the car is not on right now so it, it's not actually going to physically shift but and then you put the car in reverse by using that so one other thing that i want to note as well is that if you're going to start the car you also have to use this key card so what happens is you basically take your foot you put it on the brake as i'm doing here and then 
the car is going to instruct you to tap the key card on the center console and after you do that and only after you do that will you be able to put the car into drive neutral reverse or any of those other settings and everything is controlled from the screen and then also from the actual steering wheel with the scroll balls that you're seeing on the actual steering wheel so prime example if i was listening to music i can use this to turn the volume up as you can see here there's no music playing right now because i'm pretty sure if i started playing some music youtube would probably take this video down so i'm not going to do that um, also too you can flick the ball to the right if you want to change the tracks um, there's also some additional options here as well so if you want to change the the gapping you can do two car lengths three four i typically keep it to four and then tesla automatically saves those settings as you set them again i mentioned that opening the frunk and opening the trunk can either be done well the trunk can be done at the actual trunk the frunk has to be done from inside the car or i believe from your actual phone and i think that's just the same goes for the trunk as well so you have essentially three options with the trunk and i think with the frunk you only have the two options either in the car or actually utilizing the tesla app now again i said literally everything is on the screen so if you want to change any of the car settings you're going to have to go into the screen and you're you have the options to you know change the light settings adjust your mirrors again with the mirrors you're gonna have to use the steering wheel All right, so this goes the same for the left and right mirror to make it easier on yourself honestly once you if you're the primary driver of this car once you set these i would just set my settings to make them ideal for me so that way they just immediately go to my driver profile whenever i get into the car so again you can lock the windows from here you can fold the mirrors from here you can change the display brightness on the screen you know you can set all the light settings you can do the lock settings right so you can do key card iphone you can do all the display settings here the driving the autopilot settings navigation settings safety and security service download the latest software so this should be literally no different than an extension of your phone in terms of how you treat this and how you operate with this and it's pretty easy to do energy charging the web entertainment entertainment is particularly useful honestly when you're charging so i'm gonna just pop this up really quickly just to just to give you a view of what's what's in entertainment so you have the tesla arcade and there's plenty of games here that you can play and then there is the theater so theater gets you access to you know tesla tutorials you can watch youtube videos you can watch hulu and i've been personally watching uh, the handmaid's tale i'm on season three right now loving it there's netflix there's twitch so whatever it is that you want to watch you can watch it from there um, one other thing that i want to get into are just some of the additional settings again like i said this screen is going to be your primary point of contact and, and where you're going to be controlling everything and then <laughs> last but not least here is the climate control so this climate control option can look a little bit daunting there's so many things that you can do with this so you can literally take this and you can position the airflow however you want it to, to move right so you can have it go out you can have it be more so centered and blow straight through the middle of the steering wheel you can have it blow outward down up and then you can do the same thing for the passenger side now in this tesla model 3 it's also equipped with two charging pads so in the 2018 model i think you can add these aftermarket and a lot of people have done modifications to their teslas to do that but in the newer versions of the model 3 the 2021 specifically these come standard there's also some additional storage that are here that's here as well um it's pretty deep where you can put anything you want down here so additional devices <laughs> this is a little funny because you have to close this really gently or else it won't close so if i were to open this one more time and i were to try to rush and close it what's going to happen is i'm going to get a message here on the screen where it's going to say hey you need to try to close this a little bit more gently okay so one thing to also note while you're sitting in the tesla that there's also no sunroof to speak of that actually opens right so this sunroof is pretty much open concept it's basically a panoramic sunroof that spans towards the front and the rear of the car 
and it's tinted and it has uv protection as well so it's basically like um, riding around with with sunglasses sitting on top of you so i'm in arizona as i mentioned right now i'm in scottsdale it's 94 degrees right now and it's potentially going to go up higher so this is actually on the cooler end but there's i don't feel much heat coming down on my head the other thing that i want to note are the seats in this car so the seats in this car are really comfortable i really love these seats i really love the design the seats are more of a vegan leather so you have two options so you can either get this in white or you can get this in the black that you see here so next place we'll go is we'll go to the back seat i'll talk about that for a little bit and show you how much room is back there and then we can take this car on the road for a little spin now for leaving the car there are there is no door handle so there's no door handle here there's no door handle there that you'd be particularly used to in normal cars but with the tesla it makes it pretty easy because it's essentially an a extension of your hand in a sense where you just basically hold this handle here or you can simply just press this button and the door will open all right so this back seat is pretty spacious actually for a car of this size and its class so one thing that i really want to note with this back seat is the fact that there's plenty of room for your knees back here depending on how tall your driver is going to be even if the driver was to move back a little bit you still have some of that space here there's plenty of room in terms of head clearance and, and i'm five nine so i have a, a great deal of clearance maybe if someone were to sit back here that was probably around six five or six six or even six foot nine you may have a little bit of an issue because these seats actually don't dip down as, as well as the the front seats do and you can basically raise and lower those so i would say that for someone that's probably five nine to six foot you can fit comfortably back here you can also fit some car seats comfortably back here and there's some back of the seat storage here as well one other thing that i want to point out is the cup holders so the cup holders fold out from the center so standard to most cars the only problem is is that there's nothing to really pull it down with so there's nothing to, to hook onto or grab onto so you kind of have to dig into the seat here to really get this out which is kind of annoying but if you're driving this car and you're not going to be back here it really doesn't matter right so i'm not going to chastise tesla too much for this design overall it's, it's very simple back here it's very minimalist it's still comfortable the seats feel great and you do have an option for your passengers to charge their phones. So there's two USB charging ports back here so they can charge your devices. There are two vents back here where you can basically control, uh, it's basically a, a dual zone climate control. So you can basically take this if you're sitting back here and you can kind of position this however you want the air to blow. One other thing that I really want to note is the fact that with this being an electric vehicle and the fact that there's no axle per se, you, you don't have that hump at the bottom of the car. So you, you do have that additional room here. So you can, I personally just put shoes here. So I've, you know, if I'm going out somewhere and I wanna, you know, bring some additional shoes or whatever the case is, I'll just place them right here, right in the middle. Or even if you have a guest, if you have someone that's sitting in the middle, they don't have to straddle the inside of the car so you don't have to worry about knees bumping on each side but it's still not necessarily adding to the level of comfort that you would have if you were to sit in the back seat if three people were back here because you would still basically have to sit like this in order to give everyone else room so not too much room back here i would say the ideal amount of people you would want back here is two and not three so i know this is a five seater but unless you're just going to have really kids or, or really small people in the back I would say this is a four seater and, and that's how I classify that. All right, now it's time to take this thing on the road. Let's see what it could do. I'm excited. You should be excited too. All right, let's back out. Let's make sure we don't hit anything. All right, it even backs up fast. All right, 
So I'm stopping now and I'm off. Oh my goodness. Just like that, 60 miles an hour. This car is extremely fast, extremely quick, super agile. I love quick cars. It's low to the ground, so you're, you're gonna get that speed, but I think you're gonna get this speed out of any uh, Tesla that you choose. We're about to hop on the highway now, and we can get up to speed relatively quickly. This car is super fast. <laughs> Literally just dusted that Malibu. All right, so we're entering the highway. And one of the features that I wanted to show off today was the autopilot. So I really love that feature. This is literally my favorite feature on the Tesla. Another thing that I really like when it comes to safety is you can see a 3D image projected uh, based on what the cameras are able to take in of all the cars around you. So you can see uh, what's happening to the right of you in the different lanes, what's happening to the left of you. Another thing is this car will basically try to keep you in the lane as well. So it has a lane keeping assist that's relatively aggressive. So if I were to just basically veer off to my left, it'll start to see, so you, you can see the lane being highlighted blue now and the car's like, hey man, what are you doing? So it, it stared me back into the lane. So that's one good feature that I really like about the Tesla. I'm gonna get over into the HOV lane. And then I'm going to put it into autopilot. All right, so to put the car in autopilot, all you have to do is take the gear shifter that you can see right here. And if you click it down one time in the direction of drive, what's gonna happen is that's gonna set cruise control. If you press it two times in, the, in, in that direction, what's gonna happen is it's gonna actually set your autopilot. So if I just press it now twice, autopilot is engaged. Now, the car will tell you, please keep both of your hands on the wheel because it wants you to be able to take control at a moment's notice if anything were to happen. I don't have my hands on the wheel right now. I will put my hands back on the wheel shortly, but the car also tells you at certain points in time to put your hands back on the wheel to maintain a, a certain point of contact with the car so that they know that you're still engaged with the driver. You're not in the back seat sleeping or playing Uno or whatever the case is. Also, one thing I wanna point out is I was going 77 miles an hour and that's exactly what I set my cruise control at, but you can see that the car basically gaps itself. So it knows that there's another car in front of me. So it's gonna keep me behind that car and it's gonna slow me down so I don't run into that car or run the risk of tailgating or doing anything dangerous along those lines. So this car is really smart. It, there's a lot of tech that's packed into this car literally this is a great feature <laughs> so autopilot for road trips especially if you're going to be driving on a straight road and you don't want to have the pressures of being completely involved with the driving process you still need to pay attention but you don't need to be as invested in driving and steering and turning and all those different things because the car takes care of most of the cornering for you so this is simple i'm literally just sitting here and I'm navigating back to the Airbnb. Again, this is my favorite feature. So my goal is to get more videos with all of the different Tesla models. Um, I know that we, we have a Tesla that's supposed to be getting delivered at some point. I don't know when, but my girlfriend actually ordered the Y. So we'll see what happens when that comes in. I'll be, I'll be excited to do a review on that once we actually get our hands on that. Again, if you're rocking with me, if you like the content so far, if you like the videos that you've seen so far, please hit the like and subscribe button. So that way I can build my following as well as increase the likelihood that you'll see my videos with the YouTube algorithm. And also the reason why I wanna increase my followers as well is because I have a goal of being able to get my hands on some of the newest cars that are coming out first and get those directly from GM and Tesla and, and all of those different places. So that way I can give you an exclusive review and get to review those firsthand. So again, if you're rocking with this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the likes. 
Really appreciate it.